300 subscribers. We hit 600 subscribers. We just hit 1,000 subscribers. 5,000 subscribers. That is a lot of people. <laughs> From the day one subscribers to people who are just finding me in this video, you've all made a tremendous impact on my life. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now, my followers over on Instagram requested a retrospective on my YouTube journey so far. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to take a page out of Spotify and Storygraph's book and give you a couple stats to put in perspective just how big of a deal this is in my mind. 5,000 people is more than twice the amount of people it would take to sell out the House of Blues in Boston. 76% of all towns in the United States have fewer than 5,000 people. Pretty crazy. We could be a town. <laughs> it's actually not a bad idea. 5,000 people is more than 1,000 over the number of people employed at HarperCollins Publishing. And get this, 5,000 people is more people than are employed by Macmillan, Simon & Schuster, and Hachette Book Group combined. <laughs> How crazy is that? By this one metric, we are bigger than three of the big five publishers. So I wanna take a look back at the past about my YouTube journey, where I've come from, where I am now, and all the steps in between. And in order to keep this on brand, we're gonna call those the chapters of my journey. This is all part of the long book, the grand story that is this YouTube channel. And this book is dedicated to you. <laughs> Chapter one, the first success. This chapter was defined by one singular video that I made in 2015. I was 15 years old. And that video was Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66 unboxing slash review. <laughs> this video dominated my channel for so freaking long and it is still, it is still my most highly viewed video. Over 180,000 views at this moment. And a few other videos are, are slowly creeping up. It might take a while, but, but I think they'll get there. I filmed this video in my basement uh, one snowy afternoon and I all I showed in that video was my hands uh, and then I showed my legs for like the on feet part. I like put them on and walked around a little, but you'd only see my legs. And most of the comments on that video are people making fun of my jeans. Yeah. <laughs> Back when I used to make shoe reviews, I was a little bit of a running joke on my channel, especially with the people I know personally. Uh, whenever I wore jeans in those videos, it would comment, nice jeans. This kicked off this sort of shoe phase of my channel um, that I was stuck in for so long. I felt like it was impossible to break out of that. And only recently do I feel like I've defined my channel enough as a book channel um, that, that the shoe videos aren't dominating quite as much as they once did, though they still represent a large chunk of the views that my channel gets. To be clear, I am no longer a shoe review channel, but I leave them up for monetary reasons. <laughs> Chapter two is the wannabe travel vlogger. <laughs> For a hot second at the end of high school, I was really caught up on the idea of wanting to be a travel vlogger or a Casey Neistat type vlogger, so something like that, that has all the glamor of YouTube stardom. So right now it is 8.20 in the morning, but we're gonna make a trip down to Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Hi, uh, can I have a medium ice regular? This period in high school was also the time in my life that I took the most photos, and I also really liked the idea of being a photography YouTuber, kind of like Peter McKinnon or Matty Hapoya. Today's honorable mention for photo assignment contrast is none other than Sam the Minuteman. Sam has this beautiful photo of this brick wall sitting in the very bottom right corner wearing a mask, as you should be right now. And the wall is just split perfectly down the middle with a shadow, like perfect. Looks amazing. Super contrast. Sam the Minuteman. You know, that gives, that gives Funk Drone a run for his money. I said it. This period of my life actually laid the groundwork for um, the my video style now and the way that I currently take photos. Um, so, you know, the reason I know how to light this scene, I owe that to this period of my life. My bookstagram photos and uh, my thumbnails, this all harkens back to my photography days. Uh, so I still love photography. I love doing it as a hobby, but it's just not my main thing anymore. But that really started in, in this period of my life. But the videos from that time period really showed me exactly what it takes to be a vlogger and to make a single vlog 
which is part of the reason I don't do it very much anymore because I didn't find it to be as fun as I thought it would be. And I find making other videos a lot more fun and, and also easier. It's very difficult to make a good vlog. Mentality is a muscle. The only way to make it grow is to take care of it, <laughs> to do reps with your mind. <laughs> it's not immediately what I got good at. There's a big learning curve to it. When I look back at the videos from that time period, I see like the insecurity. It's hard for me to look back at those videos without cringing intensely. But I know that the cringe that I went through at that time in my life is something that I needed to work through in order to become the the YouTuber that I am today. Uh, it was because of all of those attempts that I worked through, uh, you know, that gap between my taste and my abilities. And my abilities actually got pretty good after a while. I think the videos I'm making today look a lot better. I'm a lot more confident on camera. And I had to go through that really like awkward phase. I mean, in life, but also in my videos. <laughs> if I could go back in time, I would tell myself at that point in my life that it would all be okay. And one day we'd be sitting at 5,000 subscribers. Chapter three is the COVID vlogs. So this was during 2020, my school shut down, except we were online, that whole thing. I was living at home. Uh, I was using my brother's room as my office <laughs> and my room as my room. So that was kind of funny. And I decided to make a short vlog every day for a month. Uh, now this wasn't the same type of vlogs I was making before, but but I'll get to that. Now I wanted to do this just to see if I could, to see if it was possible to, to try and challenge myself in some way. I was sitting around at home without a whole lot to do. Uh, so I figured, why not? perfect time to, to try something like that. This is one of the best things that I ever did to get better at making videos. I learned how to streamline my process, which was huge. I learned how to focus on one topic at a time and not make the scope of it way too big. And I learned how to properly gauge the difficulty of a concept before I started filming it. Before I did that challenge, there were many times where I would start something and it would prove to be too big or too time consuming, or I'd get distracted or bored while I was in the process. In high school, I'd vastly underestimate how difficult certain video ideas would be and I would vastly overestimate how good it would turn out and how proud of the result I would be. So this, this period really taught me how to set my expectations right and make videos that were realistic for me to achieve that I could do a good job on and be proud of. In this time, I also made some shoe reviews that was like once a week on Saturdays. And I was able to dedicate extra time to these by doing them on the weekends. During this month of daily videos, I dialed in what it means to make an interesting video, make it easy for me to make and make it efficient to complete. Chapter four was is what I call the small road videos. Uh, that refers to the road that my apartment was on sophomore year of college with my friend Kellen. This was the first time in my life where I consistently made weekly videos. Uh, I had done that one month of daily vlogs in 2020, but tw spring of 2022, no, spring of 2021 was when I first made consistent weekly videos. I still look back at these as some of my best work and they're still up on the channel if you wanna see them. I was definitely going for the Matt Diavella, Ali Abdal kind of vibe. And I was think I think I was able to achieve that and put my own spin on it, which I think worked pretty well for me. For the first time in my life, my taste in YouTube videos and my ability to create YouTube videos started to align. And if you've gone through that, you know how good it feels. And if you haven't gone through that, I know you're yearning for that. It will happen if you give it time and work really hard for it. Some standout entries from this chapter of my channel. I slept on the floor for seven days. This is a classic. I did sleep on the floor for seven days and it fixed my back problems. <laughs> How and why I handwrite everything, which is still getting a lot of views. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why my book videos are doing better because they have adjacent audiences at best. I haven't made videos about journaling or notebooks since, but I think books and journals, there's a Venn diagram in those audiences. And so I think people are enjoying both of those. And my everyday carry, where I went through all the stuff that I use on a daily basis, and what I carry in my pockets and my backpack. So pretty fun videos. I think these are some of the best production value, I guess. And I was really, I really nailed my process in that time and made some stuff that I'm really proud of. And chapter five, booktube. This is the chapter that we're currently in and that I plan to spend as much time as humanly possible in. I'm absolutely loving this chapter. I've technically been doing booktube since like June 2021 when I made my first video about like books I had read that year, but it really feels like it kicked off last fall when I started making booktube videos more consistently and really shifting my, my channel in that direction on all fronts. This is the chapter of my YouTube channel that I found the most success in both by the numbers and personally. I get so much satisfaction out of making book content. I think that satisfaction has been coming through in the videos themselves. I feel like I'm expressing myself better. I feel like I'm, you know, more willing to, to put effort into the edits to really enhance the message and help it come across better. Uh, and I think people are picking up on that. From what I've heard from commenters and all that, uh, it seems to be 
people seem to like it. They seem to think I'm being genuine, which I hope I am. <laughs> it feels like I've finally found a niche that I care about. Not choosing one at random because I think I have to for the algorithm. Not sticking with the shoes because that's what I've done in the past and that seems like what YouTube wants me to be doing. Not just imitating the YouTubers that I've liked in the past, but really kind of forging my own path in a niche that I love. But it's something that I'm genuinely happy to participate in. And it's really nice that the books are the source of my content and not my own life and what I do to it. So thank you for being here. And again, truly and deeply, thank you.